I've been having a hard time, a hard time. I've been having a hard, old hard time. Every day is just the same, not in the to my name. I've been having a hard time, and a hard time. During the Depression, uh, Dad was unable to get work. He was living off of our depression stipend. Mother, being the seamstress, had a shop down on Granville Street here in Chicago. And people from the hotel next door knew about it. And they'd come in and they'd say, oh, I saw the most wonderful film last night with Carol Lombard. And she had a wonderful gown. Would you make me a gown like that? At any rate, that's how she brought us through the depression. Things were very, very poor in our part of South Dakota. I mean, families didn't have enough to eat. Uh, there were two or three families that gave children away so that the children would have a better home. The government had virtually no programs to feed people or anything. It was pretty hard. Um, it was less so for my mother and dad because my dad had a job with the oil company, and they were able to eat. I don't think they had much in the way of luxuries or anything like that, but they were able to go through it. I used to ask my grandmother when I was a child how the Depression affected them, and she said, well, we were always so poor, it didn't matter, you know. She said, uh, they, they always had their own farms and their gardens and cows and chickens and pigs, so they were pretty self-sufficient. My husband was born and raised in San Francisco, Chinatown, and he had a big family, and he was um, the seventh child. And uh, so during the Depression years, he remembers being the family scrounger. You know, when people throw away fish heads and fish parts and chicken parts in the produce markets down there that they didn't want anymore, people were allowed to go through and pick out what they wanted. They would trim the greens uh, by cauliflowers, and I would pick up the trimmings, and that would be our vegetables. And then they would have 50-gallon barrels uh, where they would throw the chicken, duck, and turkey feet. And we would take those home and mom would make that into a uh, edible version of uh, snacks. And that's how we got some of our protein. And then I would go down and ask the butcher for a beef liver or pork liver or whatever kind of liver they had free for the cats. To save face, the butcher never asked you how many cats you had. They knew how many kids there were in the Fung family, so they would give you a big chunk of liver, knowing that you don't have a cat. <laughs> but it's only in retrospect that I can say that they were hard and difficult times, but we didn't realize it at that time because we were all in the same circumstance. It was tough for my father. He would go to the uh, farmer's market around three o'clock in the morning and see where he could buy the cheapest amount of potatoes or onions or apples or whatever that he could sell. I had my own uh, push cart and I would go with my father. When he got his stuff, I would get something and then I'd make my own display. And we had enough. As kids, we ate everything on the table. We never left anything over. And if one of us didn't left something over, somebody else would grab it and finish it. The inability to find work and to support their families drove some men to abandon their homes and travel across the country by rail, looking for work or handouts. Few women rode the rails, in fact, one writer found it hard to explain how women survived at all. It's one of the great mysteries of the city, where women go when they are out of work and hungry. There are not many women in the bread line.
Americans found many creative ways to make do during the Depression. They patched shoes with cardboard and made clothes out of flour sacks. <laughs>